the film star arrived for his interview garlanded not only with awards, but with tributes to his sex appeal. He was also, numerous magazine profiles told me, the thinking woman's crumpet. Now, I'm a thinking woman, but frankly, I just couldn't see it. As a journalist, I'd interviewed many people who interested me more. We were to get acquainted for yet another magazine profile over dinner. Ahead of this assignment, friends of every gender and sexual orientation bombarded me with excited emails. They proposed carrying my digital recorder. They proposed operating it. They proposed posing as wine waiters. They just wanted to be in the same room and breathe the same air as the film star. As I say, I didn't get it until, quite suddenly, I did. It must have been around the dessert course. He was good company, engaging, at the risk of objectifying him, hot. Now, as a woman working in journalism, I have spent years figuring out how to dodge lecherous men and had long ago trained myself to avoid any gesture that might be misinterpreted. Yet now here I was, leaning forward, <laughs> gazing at him, toying with a strand of my hair, until, oh, one of those hairs, it was attached to the middle of my cheek. So, in the very moment that I discovered the full force of the film star's magnetism, I also uncovered my new and unsuspected power. Like many women of a certain age, I'm brilliant at growing extra long body hair. And that is not our only special skill. We don't need invisibility cloaks. We become magically invisible. We become hags. Now, I'll return to hags and our special powers in a minute. But first, it's worth stating that women as a class are always overlooked in systems designed by and for men. The work that we do especially the caring work, the unpaid work, goes largely unrecognized. The violence that disfigures our daily lives should provoke outrage. Sexual harassment, assault, two women killed every single week by a current or former partner. Yet where are the men out protesting this toll? And if the present has a nasty habit of overlooking female oppression. History, his story, has always minimized female achievement. Fewer than 3% of all statues in the UK depict a named woman who was not a queen. And some women are far less visible than others. There is literally only one statue in the whole of the UK celebrating a named black woman Mary Seacole, the Jamaican-born nurse, and that was put up last year. <laughs> that is not to say that women aren't celebrated for our abilities. Oh, we are. For marriage ability, tract ability, reproductive ability, shag ability. Any woman with these abilities is going to quickly discover that society has some pretty strong views about exactly how visible she should be and to whom. Some countries punish women for showing a sliver of wrist. Others police women for covering up. There are many notions about female beauty and propriety, but on a couple of points, remarkable unanimity. Women everywhere are made to feel that we fail to measure up. As for older women, well, men gain gravitas with age. We, as I said, disappear. We become hags. Hags are... <laughs> hags are banished from TV and advertising, lest our ugliness offend. 
Hags are routinely patronised as generic old dears, yet treated as anything but dear by pensions regimes that make no allowance for the gender pay gap, the likelihood of maternity breaks, or the fact that women, on average, live longer than men. Hags can stand at any bar waving furiously at the bartender and still not be served. Hags can be the best qualified person for any job and still get nowhere. Huge issues that impact all of us, such as how to arrange social care or indeed how to fix gender inequality, the biggest global injustice of them all, are routinely ignored by men, reductively labelled women's issues. As a result, we all lose out, men very much too. That's why in 2015 I co-founded the Women's Equality Party. I believe passionately in gender equality as a matter of social justice and societal self-interest. One study alone predicts a boost to global GDP of 8.3 trillion pounds simply from narrowing the gender gap. And multiple studies point to higher rates of well-being and lower rates of depression in more gender equal countries for men. That's right, we could all be happier, healthier and wealthier. All it takes is political will. And yet instead of speeding towards that brighter future, Rights and protections women thought secure are under threat here and in many other countries. Don't despair. Remember hags and our special powers. Now, I haven't yet worked out how to use that power for growing extra long hair, but I will. And if anybody's got any suggestions, you can find me on Twitter. This much I know. Invisibility is also a superpower. I'm going to tell you how to harness that superpower and I'm going to tell you why all women should aspire to be hags. As for our male allies, let's call you hagiographers, there's a lot you can be doing too. You can support us, work with us. Above all, go out in your own bloody right as activists for gender equality. Any woman at any age or stage can be a hag. My grandmother was a classic old hag. She was from Chicago, and I remember going out to dinner with her when she was in her 90s, and a young man fussed around, addressing all of his questions, not to her, but to me. Finally, she couldn't take it anymore. She leant forward and in a stage whisper said, what do you suppose this nice young man would do if I told him to fuck right off? <laughs> we can all channel that spirit, whether we are 90 or 19. We associate hags with age because we confuse cause and effect. As young girls, we're taught to be pretty and compliant, but Age, in stripping away the possibility of socially determined prettiness, also liberates us from any impulse to be compliant. There is nothing more subversive that a woman can do than to refuse to follow social rules because those rules were created to keep us in our place. If all women were hags, those rules would not exist. Yet, while they do, we can use that unasked for invisibility. Consider Angela Merkel. She is the matron saint of haggery. <laughs> she is the world's most visible, invisible woman. Growing up in East Germany, a police state, she quickly learned the value of flying underneath the radar. Later, divorced, childless, she succeeded in penetrating the highly traditionalist, masculine-dominated politics produced by West Germany. She knew she couldn't challenge that culture head-on, so she hid in the considerable shadow of German Chancellor Helmut Kohl, apparently tolerating it when he called her, as he often did, his little 
girl, until the day she quietly authored the article that precipitated his resignation. And even after that act of patricide, her male rivals didn't see her coming. She dispatched every single one of them in 2005, becoming Germany's first female and first East German chancellor, and even then remaining underestimated, which is, by the way, just how she likes it. She, for most of her time in office, has been accused of doing too little, all the while quietly achieving feats most politicians would only dream of, holding together coalitions of left and right, calming Eurozone turmoil, building political capital. When, in 2016, she spent some of that capital throwing open the gates of Germany to the refugees massing on the border, suddenly she was accused of doing too much. Then her critics said she was a busted flush and she couldn't possibly win this year's elections. When she won this year's elections, they told her to resign because she hadn't won big enough. Here's something Merkel has said. Always be more than you appear and never appear to be more than you are. Compare and contrast that with another current world leader. <laughs> I actually think I am humble. I think I am much more humble than you would understand. <laughs> That's right, Donald Trump even boasts about being humble. <laughs> the world needs more substance, less braggadocio, more leaders quietly dismantling barriers, not presidents shouting about walls, more hags. Though hags can walk invisible, when they come together, it can be a beautiful sight. On January 21st, five million hags and hagiographers took part in 673 marches across the world. And in November 2016, 1,500 hags and hagiographers converged in Manchester for the first ever party conference of the Women's Equality Party to make the policies that are the bedrock of transformative politics. Those policies, in turn, quietly infiltrated the manifestos of the other parties at the general election. Now, don't get me wrong, I look forward to the day when we can implement those policies directly. A world that sees and values women will be better for all of us. But to build that world, we will have to use every tool at our disposal, including that unasked for invisibility. As Chimamanda and Ngozi Adichie so very nearly said, we should all be hags. Thank you.